And welcome back, folks, to beautiful Sunday River, Maine, here on a gorgeous Thursday afternoon in the western mountains of Maine. As we bring you live coverage of the 2012 USCSA Men's National Championship Giant Slalom Race here from the Barker Base Lodge and the Monday Morning Trail at Sunday River. I'm Boss Hogg alongside Alex Beattie as we will bring you the second run just about 10 minutes away and crown today a 2012 USCSA Men's National Champion in the Giant Slalom. First run action earlier on the today was absolutely amazing, as is the day here. The weather just continuing to shine upon the western Maine mountains. 54 degrees was the start temperature for run number one, and now we've made it up to 59 degrees. Will we apex 60 degrees in the first week of March here in Maine? It's absolutely unheard of, but this course is holding up strong, and now that we've set the second run, we're about ready to go here in the Giants slalom competition. Joining me next to me, Mr. Alex Beatty from the Tough Ski Team. Alex, we saw incredible ski racing earlier today in run number one. That's right, boss. A very challenging technical course set up. We have uh, decreased the, the field to about three quarters of what it was in the first run. A lot of falls and some disqualifications. It looks like it's gonna be another very fast course. I was up there for inspection and conditions are not optimal. It is very warm. Of course, the, the race crew doing their best to keep this course in great shape, but they have their work cut out for them in the second run. I talked to some of the racers who said they have never raced in conditions like this, boss. Well, it is going to be awfully challenging as the uh, skiers will have to deal with soft conditions, not to mention that uh, as the run gets uh, destroyed by the first 30 racers it'll be certainly a technical challenge as the middle and the back part of the field have to come down this Monday morning run. The 2012 USCSA National Championships are brought to you in part by Patagonia. Their mission to build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, and to use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. Learn more at Patagonia.com. Patagonia, the proud supporters of the USCSA. And by Reliable Racing, whether it's Alpine and Nordic Ski Racing Apparel and Equipment, Hill and Event Supply, Sports Timing Equipment, or Hard to Find Race Gear, Reliable Racing is your one-stop shop. Check them out on the web at ReliableRacing.com. Today's USCSA broadcast coverage also brought to you by Yeti Apparel. When you're facing truly abominable weather, the Yeti has you covered. Visit them at YetiApparel.com. Yeti. Proud supporters of the USCSA. And by Hurricane Racing. When it's custom team Alpine, Nordic, or cycling race apparel you seek, Hurricane Racing delivers. Demand the very best in custom printed ski suits, jackets, pants, and race apparel. Demand Hurricane Racing at HurricaneRacing.com. Official sponsors of the 2012 USCSA National Championships. Just about 10 minutes away from the first racer here as we flip the top 30 times from run number one. We'll reverse the order. And number 30, 30th fastest from the morning session will start first. The 29th fastest second and so on until we work our way down to defending national champion Marcus Plyer from Sierra Nevada College who threw down a lightning fast run here earlier this morning on the Monday morning trail. But of course the set is different. As they start at 749 meters up the top of Barker Mountain, they'll come down here to the base lodge. A total of 380 meters of vertical drop. They'll have to negotiate 52 gates with 49 direction changes. And if it wasn't hard enough in the first run, with the coach from University of Maine at Farmington, Harry Ricker, setting the course, it looks like now he's been outdone by Castleton College's Dale Solitruck. Solitruck has set a monster course here on the Monday morning trail as they come over the head wall into the middle section of the course. It's relatively straight and steep. They'll pick up huge speed as you see them apex the top of the hill from our viewing post at the bottom of Barker. And then as they come into the flats and then transition back into another steep section, the coach has sent them shooting across the run. A far right-hand side of the run from the skiers right to the lookers left. 
Then they'll have to negotiate their way back as the legs begin to burn. Nuclear lactic acid in the last eight gates will cause them to have to ski back from the right side of the trail all the way to the left, where they'll navigate the final four gates into the finish corral. This run is a beast. Solar Truck was not to be outdone by Harry Ricker, and he has come with a vengeance here on run number two, and it should proved to be an incredibly demanding course for these men's national champion athletes. That's right, boss. It's going to be a very tricky course for these racers. As you mentioned, that one really hard left-footed turn there, as we can see about halfway of our uh, of the course that we can view right now, it, that is going to be where this race is decided. It will take every amount of strength and determination to hold that edge in that turn and to keep these racers on the course. Reverse order for the top 30 from run number one. That'll start us out. It'll be Zach Fretz in the starting gate first from the University of Nevada, Reno. But certainly the morning session belonging to Sierra Nevada College with the top four positions led by Marcus Plyer. Then it's Luca Rico, Clement Toma Michelle, and Jacka Jazbeck, all from Sierra Nevada College in what has to be the most impressive Alpine team operation we've seen here at the USCSA in a long time. Absolutely, boss. Sierra Nevada dominating today. It will take a miracle for one of the other teams to claim that top spot. Of course, St. Olaf right now standing in second, followed by University of British Columbia. Those two spots very, very contested. It was only a couple seconds separate those schools. It'll be interesting to see if uh, any of those standings change, boss. So just about five minutes away here from our first four runners. They'll send three down to check out this monster course that's part of the second run of the men's giant slalom national championship. They will radio back up top any information that is pertinent to the run itself. And then we'll be underway with Zach Fretz, the first competitor out of the gate from UNR. Let's go over your top 30. It is Fretz, Kevin Dacos from Babson College, Cole Skinner from UMass. We'll see Tomek Dobrzanski from Penn State, along with Ian Schumann from Syracuse. And it's Robert Burke, Patrick Burke, Max Lund, Luke Terhart, and Zachary Breakstone, your first 10 down the hill in run number two. Of course, Marcus Plyer, the defending national champion out in Sun Valley, Idaho, back in 2011. He threw down an incredible run in the men's GS. And Plyer back at it again today, picking up right where he left off in Idaho, looking for his first back-to-back -back national championship here at the USCSA Nationals in Sunday River. If you are here with us in the Western Mountain of Maine, you can see it is glorious as the clouds do begin to roll in here. Of course, just wait five minutes and the weather will change. But incredibly, unseasonably record-setting warm temperatures here at Sunday River. Almost 60 degrees for the afternoon session. And that on top of a difficult run here on Monday morning should prove to be the ultimate challenge for these racers. Now coming down, we're seeing our first four runners, so we are about to get things underway here. Looks like he had a clean run. Alex, you had an opportunity during the break to ski some of this Monday morning trail. How are conditions at the very top? It's very slippery, boss. A lot of snow melt going on. That top layer, almost a plain of water. It is a very, it's going to be very challenging for these racers to hang on. And we're even seeing some of the forerunners struggle a little bit here with that those big turns there, of course, that big left footed turn I was talking about before, that will be a huge challenge for these athletes. One small miscalculation of gate distance, one difficult edge placement, one difficult body positioning can be the end of your run here on a course this tough. We'll see if Marcus Plyer can hold on to win his second national championship in the men's GS. Now our second forerunner on course. We'll see one more, and then things will kick off with Zach Fretz from the University of Nevada at Reno. We are less than a half hour from crowning the 2012 USCSA Men's National Champion in the Giant Slalom. Of course, Alpine competition continuing tomorrow as the ladies are back here on the Monday morning trail for their slalom competition. And then on Saturday, we wrap the Alpine competition up with the men's slalom here at Barker Mountain at Sunday River.
So our four runners are now through. It looks like we are ready to go here for run number two of the 2012 Men's GS. I'd like to thank all of our listeners on the World Wide Web at www.uscsa.com. Boss Hogg alongside Alex Beatty bringing you the live coverage today. As the crowd gathers around the finish corral, they are in for a treat. Lightning fast rocket ships getting ready to launch from the launch pad at the top of Monday morning. And the final course adjustments now being made. All of the gate judges getting in position. The timer's now ready to go. The starters are now ready to go. We are moments away, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready. It's time to go ski racing. Alex, these athletes had had a couple of hours uh, to take a rest here in between the first and the second session today. I got an opportunity to uh, speak to some of them. They said the conditions as the day went on uh, got progressively worse, and we wonder if we can just hold this thing together for the top 30. Amazingly, the fastest racer, Marcus Plyer, from the first run, he'll come down in the 30th position, and you only hope that it has not been rutted out significantly up till that point. That's right, boss. This course is going to be torn up by those top 30 racers. By the time uh, by the time Marcus Plyer makes his way down, it will be a lot trickier for him to navigate those gates than it would have been if he went first. Of course, it's a great way to keep the race very competitive. We split those, sorry, flip those top 30, have the 30th racer go first, and it, it really makes the field very competitive for the second run. Marcus Plyer, Luca Rico, Clement, Toma Michelle, and Jacka Jasbic all make up the Sierra Nevada College team in the top four slots. Michael Bisner from the University of British Columbia, fifth after this morning's run number one. Then it was St. Olaf's Hakon Seanhater, followed by Nathan Ord from Whitman College, Pal Prots also from St. Olaf, Enrico Erickson and Anton Larson rounding out your top 10 times on run number one this morning. Again, we'll reverse the order. So Zach Fretz from University of Nevada in Reno. He is in the start shack. He is awaiting run number two. As you said, Alex, a large, well, he had a good 20% of the field drop out after the first run, which really proves how difficult the Harry Ricker set was in run two. We can only expect to see similar results here in run number two, set by a coach Ca of Castleton, Dale Solitruck. But the USCSA National Championships is where we separate the boys from the men. Absolutely, boss. They're really testing these athletes today. It will take a true champion to be able to lay down two very good runs here on these courses that are very difficult. Of course, the first run Looked like it was very fast. The second run might be a little bit slower, but it's definitely more technical. As a ski racer for Tufts yourself, Alex, you know that uh, the first run, always the fresh legs. The second run, you try to hold on and conserve as much energy as you can during the break. Uh, but you get out of a gate like this, you come through the first 10 or 12 gates up at the top of the hill, and then the burn starts. Only the best athletes are going to make it to the bottom of this thing and get near a podium for this GS final. Our first racer from University of Nevada in Reno, now on course, it's Zach Fretz. Qualified 30th after the morning session. He'll be followed by Kevin Dacos from Babson College. And now Cole Skinner from the University of Massachusetts in the start house, awaiting run number two. Anything can happen, folks, here on the second run of this men's GS on a warm day in Sunday River, Maine. We're glad you're with us. As Zach Fretz from Nevada, Reno, crosses the stripe in a time of 117.41. That'll put him atop the leaderboard. One of the benefits of being the guinea pig out of the gate. You are atop the podium for now, but still the 29 fastest skiers to come. Now coming out of the center section into the lower third, it's Babson College's Kevin Dacos. He'll be followed by the University of Massachusetts' Cole Skinner and Tomek Dozanski from Penn State University, now in the star shack. 
That's Win. right. That's right, boss. And of course, Zach Fritz, assuming he had a clean run, it looks like this course is a full eight seconds slower than the first course. As I said, slower course, but much more technical. Now it's Cole Skinner from UMass. Check that. Kevin Dacos from Babson College crossing the stripe in 118.89. That'll put him second place behind Fritz. And it's Cole Skinner now from the University of Massachusetts. He's on course, qualified 28. Into the last eight gates comes Cole Skinner. Skinner trying to keep the speed up, letting the skis do the work, but it's tough when the legs are so tired as he makes a tuck and across the stripe comes Skinner. The UMass is Cole Skinner across in 117.78 for a combined time of 227.22. Now on course, it's Tomek Dozanski from Penn State University, the Nittany Lion. And he had a tough time, as you can see, in that one section as they come out of the flat back into the steep, and it swings them hard right. A hard left foot turn for these ski racers. And it looks like that uh, Dobransky was unable to negotiate it. We'll probably see a lot of that this afternoon here on this Monday morning trail. That's right, Tomek Dobransky will be the first of many to struggle on that turn. I'm really interested to see how these top racers will be able to maintain their speed with such a sharp direction change. Now into the lower third comes Ian Schumann from Syracuse University. Qualified 26 after the first run, he's got a good run going. He's first after the second intermediate split. With five gates to go, here comes Ian Schumann from Syracuse. He'll be followed by Robert Burke. But at the bottom with a gate to go, it's Schumann. Schumann tucking and punching the finish line into the corral is Schumann. And it's good enough for third place with a time of 118.30 and a combined time of 227.42. Now it looks like Robert Burke. No, check that. Robert Burke just comes across the finish line. So we had Schumann and we had Burke reversed. So all the info we gave you on Ian Schumann belongs to Robert Burke from Castleton College. He crosses the strike. Okay. Now it's bib number 14 across the finish line. And we're going to get our timing situated up here. We'll tell you what's going on in just a second. Bib number 14. That belongs to Patrick Burke from Castleton College. He's across the stripe. So as we get things situated here in the Barker Timing Shack, we take a break and have a hold on the course. It looks like now Syracuse University's Ian Schumann in bib number 16 at the top of the hill. He'll be dropping in for second run. Zach Fretz already across the line from the University of Nevada, Reno. He currently leads. In second place, it's Cole Skinner from the University of Massachusetts. And in the third position from Babson College, Kevin Dacos. And just like that, the blue skies fill up with clouds. <laughs> And not light color clouds, I might add, as the grayness makes its way over the north side to the north face of Barker Mountain. They're calling for cloudy skies this afternoon, possibly even rain showers beginning around 4 o'clock. We're hoping to get this race in before that happens. But, Alex, it is amazing how fast conditions can change here at Sunday River. Absolutely, Boston. You can see just how windy it is at the top of the mountain by how fast these clouds have moved in. It's going to get dark, and there is, as you said, a chance of rain, but it could be the dark lighting alone that could really decide this race. It's going to be exceptionally hard to see up there. And just like that, we are in flat light conditions here on the Monday morning trail. That definitely adds another kicker to an already difficult second run reality for these gentlemen. As if the course isn't hard enough, and certainly the set here in the second run, extremely difficult. Now we're going to have to deal with changing light conditions. Let's throw it all at these college ski racers. They can handle it. They're the best in the United States and around the world. That's why they're here at the 2012 USCSA National Championships. Now we've got Ian Schumann on course from Syracuse University. Of course, Syracuse's Ian Schumann, a senior, also does ski jumping, and I got to tell you, boss, those kids are fearless. It's no surprise that he's a strong racer as well. 
It's a no fear mentality for those ski jumpers, and it really shows in the course. We should be seeing Ian Schumann from Syracuse coming over the apex onto the head wall. He'll be followed by Castleton College's Robert Burke. So we're getting things squared away here and situated inside the timing station at Barker Mountain. And now Burke has dropped in from the start shack. As we see Ian Schumann from Syracuse. Now making his way out of the middle section into the lower third. Skiing well. You can't get late on this course. Late can cost you the entire race. Now Schumann able to negotiate the hard left hand turn or left booted turn and right hand turn for the skier. Now into the final five gates. Three gates to go for Ian Schumann from Syracuse. And across the stripe comes Schumann in a time of 119-14. It's good enough for third position. So your top three, it's Ian Schumann, Cole Skinner, Zach Fretz. And now coming through the finish line, we'll have to take a look at the bib number. That's bib number 57 as we get our timing system situated here. We'll try to tell you what's going on as soon as we know. All right, let's get things back together here. Looks like we've had Max Lund from St. Olaf College in Bib 67 cross the finish line in a 226.35. It puts him in the lead. Luke Terhart from the University of British Columbia also across the line in a combined time of 228.44. And Luke Terhart really uh, tore this course anew and he fell across the finish. It's a testament to how exhausted these racers are. They cannot even stand up across the finish. Really impressive stuff, boss. So let's go down your top five now. In the fifth slot from Babson, it's Kevin Dacos. He's followed by Syracuse University's Ian Schumann in fourth. Then third place, Cole Skinner from University of Massachusetts. Zach Fretz from the University of Nevada at Reno in second. And currently atop your leaderboard from St. Olaf College, it's Max Lund. Alex, it's quite amazing how fast the light conditions have changed here on the Monday morning trail. Just 10 minutes ago, we were looking at blue skies, had to wear your sunglasses out there to uh, battle the rays, and just like that, it has become cloudy here on the north side of Barker Mountain, all the way east to west. We look behind us to the south. And it looks like clear skies, but uh, boy, it is dark and gray and getting darker here at the top of this hill and it will cause lighting issues for these racers. That's right boss and it's even starting to look colder out there. Of course at lunch you know you saw a lot of people skiing in t-shirts. I of course was out there in my t-shirt. Now I see people donning their jackets and hats again getting a little bit cooler. Back to live action it's Zachary Breakstone from Babson College now. Breakstone on course had the fifth fastest intermediate split. Now the eighth fastest in the second shack. Looks like he had difficulty in the middle of the course, trying to bring the speed back in the final six gates. Here comes Babson College's Zachary Breakstone. Now Breakstone with three gates to go. And into the tuck and across a stripe into the corral comes Zachary Breakstone with a 120-26. And a 229-06 combined, getting him into seventh position. Now from the United States Naval Academy, it's Patrick Papp. Papp qualifying 20th in this morning session. He'll be followed by Hobart College's Bart Flynn, and then it's Christian Perryman from Clarkson. Into the lower third comes Patrick Papp from Navy. 
Here comes the midshipman with eight gates to go. Patrick Papp from the United States Naval Academy. Trying to hold on as the legs burn. Here comes Patrick Papp. Into the last gate and across a stripe, it's Papp. With a time of 130.69. Good enough for eighth place and a combined time of 239.48. Now it's Bart Flynn from Hobart College. Flynn with five gates to go. He'll be followed by Christian Perryman. Bart Flynn qualifying 19th after the morning session. Now into the tuck and across the line is Bart Flynn. Good enough for fourth place with a combined time of 228.05. Now flying down the center part of the course into the lower third, it's Christian Perryman from Clarkson. He'll be followed by teammate Jean-Philippe Fenouf. With eight gates to go, here comes Christian Perryman, qualifying 18th in the morning session. He's fifth after the second intermediate gate. He'll need to pick it up to get past Max Lund. Two gates to go for Perryman. Now into the tuck and across the strike. It is Christian Perryman. And he takes the lead with a 226.03. Your new leader from Clarkson University, it's Christian Perryman. So your top five, it's Bart Flynn, Cole Skinner, Zach Fretz, Max Lund, and your new leader, Christian Perryman. But Jean-Philippe Fanouf wants to change things. Here comes Clarkson's Jean-Philippe Fanouf. 17th after the morning run. Seventh in the second intermediate split gate. Can he make up the time in the tuck? Now the final gate and across the stripe, it's Fanouf. And Fanouf into fourth position with a 227.19. Now Northeastern University's Rob Visconti on course. Wearing bib 23, qualifying 16th in run one. Visconti, he's not afraid of anything. He'll let it all hang out. Nothing to lose for Rob Visconti. Now six gates to go for Visconti. Will Visconti be able to overtake Perryman? The Northeastern University's Rob Visconti crosses the stripe into third place with a combined time of 226.42. Now the action heats up with Rocky Mountain College's Harold Carlson. Carlson coming down the head wall, into the transition, and he's late, but he recovers. He had to scrape a lot of speed there, but he recovered, made the gate in that hard right-hand sweeper. Five gates to go for Carlson. Will he be able to pick up the speedy loss in the center part of the course? Here comes Harold Carlson. Two gates to go. And across the stripe, it's Rocky Mountain College. It's Harold Carlson, and it is enough. The new leader with a combined time of 225.16. Still the fastest 15 skiers to come. Harold Carlson in the lead. Perryman in second. Lund in third. Into the lower third now skis Ben Middleton from the University of British Columbia. Middleton, third after the first intermediate split, but he lost time in the middle of the course, back to 10th in the second gate out. He'll have to work hard to make the time up here in the bottom. Three gates to go for Ben Middleton. Now Middleton, pushing his way to the cross, the finish line, and into the corral is Middleton. Good enough for third position. 226-25 is the combined time for Middleton. So your top five, Visconti, Lund, Middleton, Perryman, and Harold Carlson from Rocky Mountain College. Still your leader. Nick Stang from St. Olaf on course. He'll be followed by Aldo Balabio from the University of Nevada, Reno. Meanwhile, seven gates to go for Stang. Nick Stang qualifying 13th after the morning run. He's in his tuck trying to get speed and across the line comes Stang. Good enough for second place. Nick Stang with a combined time of 225.38. It looks like the light is vicious up there, as is this course. You can tell as they come through the center section. Here is Aldo Balabio. Aldo Balabio from the University of Nevada at Reno with eight gates to go. Hung on through the center section. Now in the lower third, trying to gain speed, but it's tough. Aldo Balabio from University of Nevada at Reno with two gates to go. In the tuck and across a stripe comes Balabio. And it's good enough for the lead. 224-38 puts Aldo Balabio from University of Nevada at Reno in the lead. So now it's Balabio, Carlson, Stang, Perryman, and Middleton, your top five. But Brian Kazar from 
University of Colorado wants to change things. Qualifying 11th after the morning session. He's almost out of control, but he recovers as he gets into the last eight gates. Here comes Brian Kazar. Brian Kazar with three gates to go from the University of Colorado. Into the tuck and across a stripe is Kazar. Not good enough for the lead. He's in fourth place. 225.89 is a combined time. Anton Larson from Rocky Mountain College now on course through the center section. A third to go. The legs are nuclear as Anton Larson makes his way, letting it all hang out. Eight gates to go for Larson. Will it be enough for Rocky Mountain College's Anton Larson qualifying 10th after the first run? Three gates to go for Larson. Here comes Anton Larson. And across the stripe, he takes the lead. Anton Larson from Rocky Mountain College, your new leader, with a combined time of 223.57. But Rico Erickson from Sierra Nevada College wants to move up with the rest of his teammates. He qualified ninth as the rest of the Sierra Nevada team took the top four slots. He's a fantastic racer. He was first at the intermediate split, but has fallen back to fourth in the second gate out. Will he make the time up in the last five gates as Rico Erickson from Sierra Nevada College into the final gate now tucks for the finish line, punches the stripe, and Rico Erickson takes the lead. From Sierra Nevada College, it's Rico Erickson with a combined time of 222.98. Pal Prots now from St. Olaf on course. Qualified eighth fastest, still the eight fastest racers to come down. He'll be followed by Whitman College's Nathan Ord. We've just been asked if we can have some help for the uh, slip. We need some lady racers to help slip the course to smooth things out. And as we suspected, Alex, things getting quite dicey even before the top 30 have come down. Absolutely, boss. And I haven't seen a single racer who hasn't been late on that turn. Just a testament to how rough this course has been. Of course, I'm talking about that hard left-footed turn that's been giving everyone so much trouble. Now it's Whitman College's Nathan Ord into the bottom third with nine gates to go. Here comes Nathan Ord. Ord trying to get moved up here on the podium. It's led by Rico Erickson. But Ord wants to change things. Skiing for Whitman College. Into the finish corral comes Nathan Ord. And it's good enough for third place. A combined time of 223.82. St. Olaf's Hawkins shown hater. He's on course wearing bib 42. Six fastest after run number one. And he is moving well. Letting the skis do all the work. Here comes Hawkins shown hater from St. Olaf's. He'll be followed by Michael Bisner from the University of British Columbia who's on course. Time is what you need. But it's Hawkins shown hater. From St. Olaf College across the stripe, and he takes the lead. Hawkins Schoenhater from St. Olaf College with a 221.66. He's atop your leaderboard. Rico Erickson in second, Anton Larson in third, Ord in fourth, and Balabio in fifth. Still the fastest gears to come, although trouble for Michael Bizdair from the University of British Columbia. He had to scrape all kinds of speed coming into the lower third in that transition. The same one that has given all of these racers difficulty so far. Here comes Michael Bizdair. He was first after the first intermediate split. What will happen to this time for Bizdair as he punches the stripe? In a combined time of 224.19, it cost him everything. It's only good enough for fifth. So Hawkins, shown hater from St. Olaf, still in the lead. But Sierra Nevada College's Jacka Jazbeck. Now he's on course. Jazbeck wants to show the rest of his teammates he's the best. Will he be able to overtake Plyer? Now it's Jacka Jazbeck from Sierra Nevada College. Three gates to go for Jazbeck. He'll be followed by Toma Michelle. Jacka Jazbeck into the tuck and across the stripe, and he takes the lead. Jacka Jazbeck. Now your leader with a time of 220.65. Still the top three to come. The entire Sierra Nevada College Alpine team. Clement Toma Michelle on course. He'll be followed by Luca Rico. And then Marcus Plyer, the defending national champion. He awaits at the top of the start gate. Eight gates to go for Toma Michelle. Toma Michelle now. Moving through the bottom third. He almost wipes in the eighth gate. But he recovers. He's very late. He lost a lot of speed. We'll have to see what it does to his time. And across the line comes Toma Michelle. 
And it's good enough for second place. So the scrape costs Toma Michelle. He's behind teammate Jacka Jazbeck. Meanwhile, Luca Rico now skiing down the head wall into the transition, out of the center part of the course into the lower third. Here comes Luca Rico from Sierra Nevada College. Into the last 10 gates comes Rico. Will it be enough to hold off Marcus Plyer, who is now on course? Here is Luca Rico from Sierra Nevada College into the final gate. He tucks and punches the finish line. It's not enough. Luca Rico in fourth place with a 221.86. Now the defending national champion, Marcus Plyer, is off. He's off course. Marcus Plyer at the top of the head wall. He went wild. He lost the left hand edge and he skied out. It might cost him the national championship. Jack Jazbeck from Sierra Nevada College is currently in the lead. Will Plyer be able to pick it up? It'll be a miracle. He had a two second lead after run number one. He is trying, trying to get the speed back. But will it happen? Here comes Marcus Plyer across the stripe. And no, sixth place for Plyer. And Jack Jazbeck, the upset of the day from Sierra Nevada College. He's going to win the 2012 USCSA National Championship for the men's giant slalom. An amazing comeback for Jack Jazbeck as he wins his first national title. Wow, boss, you will not see a more exciting finish to a ski race than that. Deus Ex Machina for Jack Jazbeck. God out of the machine. He will take home the championship for Sierra Nevada. As we said earlier in the broadcast, anything can happen in ski racing, and today it came true. As Marcus Plyer trying to go back to back, he had the fastest first run. He was letting it all hang out, and he shot out of one of the gates coming down the head wall, and it cost him the race. Meanwhile, Jack Jazbeck from Sierra Nevada, his teammate, lays down a fantastic second run of 114.71 the fastest of the day, and Jazbeck earns the national championship the hard way, skiing well in flat light conditions, ever-changing conditions on the Monday morning trail, but Jack Jazbeck masters it all, and he'll be your 2012 USCSA national champion. That he will, boss, and he was in fourth after the first run, just a testament to how impressive this second run was for Jack Jazbeck. Let's go down your top 10 now. It's Alda Balabio from the University of Nevada in Reno in 10th. Michael Bisner from British Columbia in 9th. Nathan Ord from Whitman College in the 8th slot. Then it's Anton Larson from Rocky Mountain College in 7th. Marcus Plyer will have to settle for 6th place from Sierra Nevada. Rounding out your top 5, teammate Rico Erickson also from Sierra Nevada. In the 4th position, it's Luca Rico from Sierra Nevada. In third, Hawkins Schoen Hader from St. Olaf College. In the second runner up slot from Sierra Nevada College, Clement Toma Michelle. And winning today's 2012 USCSA Men's Giant Slalom National Championship from the Sierra Nevada College, it they belongs to Jacka Jazbeck. And to the Sierra Nevada College team as well, boss, putting on a clinic today with five of their racers in the top six. It was all Sierra Nevada all day. Amazing performance by the athletes of the Sierra Nevada College Alpine Ski Team. There is no doubt they have got a formula for success working out at that college. Certainly great athletic abilities, but when you see an entire team come to a national championship, and take away slots one, two, four, five, and six. Wow, that's all we can say about Sierra Nevada. Absolutely, boss. And it will be a tough competition for the other teams in contention for the podium. Of course, St. Olaf sitting in second after the first run, followed by University of British Columbia. But of course, Clarkson right on their tail. Will be very interesting to see how the rest of this race plays out. Meanwhile, let's get back to some live action here from the Barker Broadcast Center at the base of the Monday morning trail at Sunday River. We lost David Noisdell to the field. He had a crash, but appears to be okay. And he will not cross the uh, finish line. Pal Prots earlier also uh, did not make it across the finish line. 
And now let's go down some of the finishers that have uh, come across since we've been talking about our national champion, Jacka Jazbeck. From the University of British Columbia, Austin Taylor in with a combined time of 227.81. Good enough for 21st position. Austin Taylor from the University of British Columbia has come through in a 227.81. Paul Kotke from RPI in a 228.13. Good enough for 23rd slot. Then it was Babson's Greg LaFrance with a 237.71. That's 31st position. Chris McChesney from Whitman College also across the stripe in 229. No, check that. That is a 228.48. Good enough for 27th position. C.J. Piero from Syracuse University. He crosses in 229.82. Good enough for 29th. Then it was Hobart College's Weston Traub with a 232.29 putting Weston Traub into 31st position. And caught back up, Joey Vermeulen from Northern Michigan University. Joey with a second run time of 120.15, and that puts him in the 30th position. Now coming across the finish line from the Naval Academy, it's Stefan Schmidt. Schmidt crosses in 121.26, good enough for 31st place. Alex Rose on course from the University of Maine at Farmington. He'll be followed by Sam Ricker. And it looks like uh, Alex Rose is down there at the transition. Rose took out a flag on the gate just as he entered the flat spot there where the road crosses almost a crossover trail there as we come into the lower third of Monday morning. And uh, he had a tough time negotiating that elevation chain. So that's going to be the end of the day for Alex Rose. I cannot stress enough, boss, how difficult that part of the course is. A very distinct elevation change and a very distinct direction change. That is a recipe for disaster. Meanwhile, on course into the lower third comes Sam Ricker from the University of Maine at Farmington. Here comes Sam Ricker with eight gates to go. Having a clean run is Ricker. Sam Ricker with five gates to go. And from the University of Maine at Farmington, crossing the stripe, it's Sam Ricker with a second run time of 119.33. A combined time of 229.83. Good enough currently for 30th position for Sam Ricker. Rocky Mountain College's A.J. Oliver now into the lower third with nine gates to go. He'll be followed by Clarkson's David Simon. And in the start shack, it's Ryan Leak from Syracuse University who's now just dropped into the course. Back down at the bottom, A.J. Oliver from Rocky Mountain College crosses his stripe in 118. Check that, 116.85. The seventh fastest run of the day in the second run. A great run for A.J. Oliver. And Rocky Mountain really needed that great run from A.J. Oliver, boss. They definitely have a shot at the podium with that fantastic finish. Get next to the opposite side. A.J. Oliver now in the finish corral, a successful national championship for him. And it looks like David Simon from Clarkson University, he had to stop and hike as he missed a gate again in the same transition period, which has caused wreaked havoc for a lot of the field here on the second run. David Simon now back into action, three gates to go. You know, Alex, it's so tough, though, once you've scraped all the speed off, once you come to a stop, to get back going. And then the muscles start to cram. The out of breath comes into the lungs, and it is difficult. But it's great to see these kids hike for the gates and make the run. That's how determined they are to finish the run in the national championships. There's no higher honor than placing in the national championship, boss, and these kids really want it. Ryan Leak now from Syracuse University across the finish line in 121.81. Good enough for 35th slot. Now coming over the top of the head wall into the middle section is Cedric Dubois from Clarkson. He'll be followed by Travis Soderquist from the University of Idaho. Into the lower third comes Dubois. Now Chad Hawkins on the course from Castleton College. He'll be followed by Michigan State's Connor Cloating. 
Meanwhile, here at the bottom across the stripe comes Cedric Dubois from Clarkson University with a finish time of 120.43. That's good enough for 33rd position. Now coming down the head wall is Travis Soderquist. Soderquist late, but now back on time. He makes the transition, had to scrape some speed, but now he's back on. Here comes Travis Soderquist from the University of Idaho. Three gates to go, two, one. Now the finish line for Travis Soderquist from the University of Idaho. And a time of 120.86, good enough for 34th position. Now in the head wall into the lower third from Castleton College, it's Chad Hawkins. He'll be followed by Michigan State University's Connor Cloting. Florian Weil now from St. Olaf in the start check, awaiting run number two. For those of our listeners not familiar with this Castleton Spartans team, they are cold hard racing machines, boss. Every winter they take the weakest Castleton Spartan, send him out into the wilderness with a canteen and some provisions, and only if he survives is he allowed to remain on the team. Brutal. That's all I can say is brutal. Turn him into men. Chad Hawkins across the stripe in 119.78 from Castleton College. That's good enough for 33rd position. Meanwhile, Michigan State University's Connor Cloating. Cloating now hiking. He struggled with the same transition. He shouldn't worry. It's only affected 15 other athletes here in the <laughs> second run. Dale Solo Truck from Castleton College has set a monster here on the Monday morning trail for run number two of this 2012 men's giant slalom final. Now into the lower third comes Florian Weil from St. Olaf. Florian Weil. Six gates to go for Florian. He'll be followed by Timothy Ute from Syracuse University. And a great run from Florian Weil from St. Olaf College with a time of 119.95. That's good enough for 35th position for Florian Weil. And Florian Weil, the freshman out of St. Olaf, not only a fantastic alpine racer, but he's also competing in the skier cross. So we'll see him later in the week, both in slalom and in skier cross. While we await Timothy Oot now dropping in from the Star Shack, let's go over your top 10 in the 10th slot from University of Nevada, Reno, Aldo Balabio. Michael Bisner from the University of British Columbia, ninth. Eighth belongs to Nathan Ort from Whitman College. Then it's Anton Larson from Rocky Mountain in seventh. Sixth, Marcus Plyer from Sierra Nevada College, the fastest qualifier after the first run and the defending national champion. But he struggled. He struggled because he let it all hang out on the head wall. In fifth position, it's Rico Erickson from Sierra Nevada. In fourth, Luca Rico, also from Sierra Nevada. St. Olaf's Hacken Schoenhater in third place. Clement Toma Michel from Sierra Nevada in the runner up slot. But the day belongs to Jacka Jasbic from Sierra Nevada College, winning his first national title here in the men's giant slalom. Back to live action, Timothy Oot from Syracuse University drops into the lower third. 13 gates to go for Oot. Syracuse University's Timothy Oot now making his way into the final seven gates. He'll be followed by Josh Cooley and Cooley now on course. But at the bottom with a gate to go and across the stripe comes Timothy Oot from Syracuse with a time of 120.45. That puts him in 38th position. Of course, Timothy Oud did not make yesterday's USCSA crash montage, but apparently he's been on the Empire State Games crash montage for three years due to an epic BNET and crash. He's hoping to avoid the same fate this week at the 2012 USCSA National Championships. Wanted to give you an update. Uh, Connor Cloating did not cross the finish line. It looks like he skied off course, but he's going to be okay. And now Timothy Oot across the stripe in 120.45. Josh Cooley from the University of Maine and Farmington is now through the center section into the lower third. Cooley, a CBA graduate, 
Another one from the Powerhouse Prep School of Skiing out at Sugarloaf Mountain. Now skiing for Harry Ricker at the University of Maine Farmington. Cooley with four gates to go. A family of ski racers in the Cooleys. Here comes Josh Cooley. And across the stripe, it's Josh Cooley with a second run time of 120.84. And that's good enough for 41st position for Josh Cooley. Eric Gorenstein now from Cornell on course. He'll be followed by Cameron Geller from University of Massachusetts. And Castleton College's Reed Dreschel awaits his second run from the start shack. Meanwhile, eight gates to go for Eric Gorenstein from Cornell University. Gorenstein qualified 52nd after the first run. He's moved up to 39th. Let's see if he can beat that as he crosses the stripe in 120.96. That'll be good enough for 42nd position for Cornell University's Eric Gorenstein. Now coming down the head wall into the final 10 gates, it's Cameron Geller from the University of Massachusetts. Reed Dreschel now on course as well. Geller, 53rd fastest after the morning, but 39th fastest after the second run. At the second intermediate split, he's got a good run going. Let's see if he can move up the chart as Cameron Geller from UMass crossing the stripe in 120.49. That'll be good enough for 42nd position. Reed Dreschel now from Castleton College on course. He'll be followed by Syracuse's Jake Seidel and Bobby Jones. He's got the driver out at the top of the mountain from Castleton College. He awaits run number two. Jacob Jazbeck with an amazing performance out of the fourth position from run number one to take a national championship. Marcus Plyer must be stunned, but all in good fun as it all belongs to Sierra Nevada College today. Reed Dreschel from Castleton across the stripe in 120.79. Jake Seidel now into the lower third. He'll be followed by Bobby Jones, who's on course. Ten gates to go for Seidel. And now on course at the top, it's Penn State Alatoona's Devin Dimick. Here at the bottom with two gates to go comes Jake Seidel from Syracuse University. And across the stripe, it's Seidel. Into the finish corral with a time of 120.78. Syracuse's Jake Seidel, a senior, had two clean runs today. Last year, he had a big fall at Nationals and could not complete his run. He is hoping to lay down another two clean runs on Saturday to round out his last national championships. Well, the men's action does continue here on Saturday. We'll bring you a live coverage of both run number one and two for the men's slalom competition. You'll want to tune into the USCSA Radio Network at 9 a.m for live coverage on Saturday morning. Meanwhile, across the strike comes Bobby Jones from Castleton College with a second run time of 122.10. That's good enough for 46th position for Jones. Now we see Devin Dimick. Dimick trying to gather some speed. He had to scrape a lot as he made it down the head wall. He'll speed up here and hopefully get into the last 10 or 12 gates with some speed. Here comes Devin Dimick. Penn State Alatoona's Devin Dimick. Now Dimick with three gates to go. He'll be followed by William O'Connor from Clarkson University. And across the stripe is Devin Dimick from Penn State Altoona. With a combined time of 241.38, putting him in 49th position. You know, Alex, it is warm in Maine when the shoe flies come out of the wood of the building. That's right, boss, and they are everywhere. <laughs> Joining us here in the broadcast <laughs> booth. You know it's hot when that happens. That's when you go to Florida. Now across the stripe, it's William O'Connor from Clarkson University. And uh, O'Connor crosses in 122-13. Good enough for 47th position. So he moves from 58th to 47th. A good move for William O'Connor from Clarkson. Next, we'll see UMass's Joshua Anderson. And he'll be followed by the University of Minnesota Duluth's Corey Paneski. Now, David Neustel from University of Minnesota Duluth, also on course. 
So Joshua Anderson, first to come down. We'll see him with four gates to go. Then it's Corey Panuski and David Neustel. Three on course at once. As Joshua Anderson crosses in a time of 134-94. Had an opportunity to have lunch with some of the Northern Michigan University kids here today. It's great to hear about their stories. Of course, Northern Michigan with a great alpine ski racing team, considering that there's not a bunch of uh, big mountains in Northern Michigan. But they find a way to train. That's right, and they found a way to get snow, too. No snow, of course, in the Midwest for these skiers. It must have been a rough training season, boss. Now Corey Panuski from the University of Minnesota, Duluth, across the stripe in 126.52. And David Neustel, his teammate, with eight gates to go. He'll be followed by Penn State University's Ben Carroll. And now from Northern Michigan University, Kevin Prystrap, he's on the course. Into the finish corral comes David Neustel from University of Minnesota Duluth. In a time of 121.50, good enough for 36th position. A great run for David Neustel from University of Minnesota Duluth. Now it's Ben Carroll. The Nittany Lion with eight gates to go from Penn State. Here comes Ben Carroll. He'll be followed by Kevin Priestap from Northern Michigan University. The gate to go and across the stripe comes Ben Carroll with a time of 125.19. Kevin Priestap now from Northern Michigan University coming down the head wall. Out of the center section into the lower third comes Priestap. Priestap letting it all hang out here. You know, Alex, you can tell when the legs really start to get on fire. It's right down the head wall in the transition. You can see them. They get up high. They get out of the low crotch position because it just plumb hurts. Absolutely, boss. And in those steep sections, you can tell the most when those legs are hurting because the hardest to stay on those edges, and some of these racers are definitely getting late. And across the line comes Kevin Priestap from Northern Michigan University with a time of 125.58. Now from the University of Maine Farmington, it is David Berthume. David Berthume. He is on course. He'll be followed by Andrew Becker from Northern Michigan University. And in the start shack, it's Patrick Beauregard from the United States Military Academy. But a great day for Sierra Nevada College's Jacka Jazbeck, winning a national championship. Here in run number two of the men's giant slalom. Boss Hogg and Alex Beattie bringing you the coverage from the Barker Broadcast Center here at the base of the Monday morning trail of beautiful Sunday River, Maine. Glad you're joining us on the USCSA radio network at www.uscsa.com. Make sure you check out the website. Get all the information about the organizing body of collegiate snow sports. Live results from all the conferences and a bunch of other good stuff. We invite you to see us at www.uscsa.com. Meanwhile, from Northern Michigan University, Andrew Becker across the stripe in a time of 126.16. It's good enough for 55th position. As we have a hold on the course here, we await United States Military Academy's Patrick Beauregard, wearing bib number 112. He qualified 85th after the first run. He's going to see if he can make it down here a lot faster and improve his place. And uh, we are going to get some of the ruts scraped out of this course high above the Barker Mountain here. Alex, definitely a challenging day here as we have had eight different kinds of light conditions, probably 16 <laughs> temperature changes, 41 different snow condition changes. It's really anybody's guess when you come down this mountain right now. Absolutely, boss, and it's been very tricky for these racers, no doubt. The conditions change dramatically from when they inspect to when they get to run the course, and they have absolutely no idea what they're in for, boss, and it's, uh, it's shown a lot of racers really have struggled on this second run. So as we have a hold on the course here and we await Patrick Beauregard, let's go over the top 15 positions. 
In the 15th slot, it is University of British Columbia's Ben Middleton. 14th belongs to Christian Perriman from Clarkson University. Brian Kazar from the University of Colorado in the 13th slot. Nick Stang from St. Olaf in 12th. 11th, it's Harold Carlson from Rocky Mountain College. Now your top 10, Aldo Balabio from University of Nevada, Reno. In the ninth position, it's Michael Bisner from the University of British Columbia. Whitman College's Nathan Ord holds the eighth slot. Then from Rocky Mountain College in seventh, it's Anton Larson. The defending national champion, Marcus Plyer from Sierra Nevada College in sixth. Rounding out your top five, it's Rico Erickson, also from Sierra Nevada. In fourth place, Luca Rico from Sierra Nevada. Hawkins Schoenhater from St. Olaf in the third slot. Clement Toma Michelle from Sierra Nevada College. He's the runner up in second. And in an unbelievable second run performance, a time of 114.71, almost a second and a half faster than the second fastest time. It's Chaka Jazbek from Sierra Nevada College claiming the gold and winning the 2012 USCSA Men's National Championship here in the Giant Slalom competition. That's right, boss, and it looks like we've built our team podium as well. In fifth place, Clarkson. Fourth place, University of British Columbia. And then in third place, Rocky Mountain College. Right behind St. Olaf in second, and of course Sierra Nevada in first. So the West dominating the day here, claiming all top three spots, the top four spots going to Western colleges. Really an impressive showing by these West Coast skiers. It's always fun to talk about the battle between the East and the West. You know, we ski the icy conditions, the hard pack surfaces, not a lot of powder skiing out here in the East, whereas they get to ski in the warm sun and the deep pow out West. They always wonder who can race better. And it seems like it's split right down the middle. One year we'll see ski racers from the East win everything. Then it'll be ski racers from the West. But this year in the Alpine GS competition, no doubt it belongs to Sierra Nevada College with an incredible team performance, taking slots number one, two, four, five, and six. Wow. But the most impressive, Chaka Jazbek, winning the national championship today in an incredible second run here on the Monday Morning Trail. Now back to live action. From the United States Military Academy, it's Patrick Beauregard into the lower third. Seven gates to go for Beauregard. He'll be followed by teammate Jack Ballstad and William Lavis from Navy up in the star chat. Two gates to go, one gate, now the stripe for Patrick Beauregard. And he crosses in 124.11, good enough for 52nd. You know, Alex, there is a competition within a competition going on on this ski hill today between the Military Academy, between Navy, and between Air Force. And don't think they don't fight it out amongst themselves and brag about it at the end of the race, regardless of where they come in in the pack. That's right, boss. Absolutely a game within a game there, of course, right now. Uh, after yesterday's... I'm trying to get those uh, standings for you right now. It looks like... Navy is right now sitting in 15th place, uh, way ahead of the uh, United States Military Academy and Air Force, both lower down in the stand standing. Sorry, it looks like Navy is right now winning that battle, but a lot of more racers to come, a lot more racers from, uh, from Army and some from the Air Force as well. Don't think they don't think about it on each and every run for these racers. As Pat Beauregard crosses the line in 124.11, now William Lewis from the Naval Academy. William Lavis. Lavis qualifying 67th after the first run. Makes his way now down the head wall. Out of the center section into the lower third comes Lavis. Lavis now into the tough and tricky transition with the hard left-hand turn. He successfully navigates it. Is back on edge and skiing well. Here comes William Lavis, the midshipman from the Naval Academy. William Lavis, 57th, check that, 67th fastest after the first run. Can he make it up here? With two gates to go, here comes William Lavis. 
And across the stripe, it's the midshipman, William Lavis, with a time of 125.27, moved up to 57th place for Navy. Now the United States Military Academy, go Army, it's Jackson Callaghan. He'll be followed by teammate Jason Lally, a mini platoon of Army, now coming down the hill. Into the lower third comes Jackson Callaghan. Callaghan with six gates to go. Meanwhile, just coming over the top of the head wall, it's teammate Jason Lally, but now into the stripe comes Jackson Callaghan from the Military Academy in a time of 125.45. That's good enough for 58th position. So William Lavis from Navy in the 57th slot. Jackson Callaghan from Army in the 58th slot. Jason Lally, it all rests on his shoulders. Will he beat the Navy guy? So he'll need to lay down a very impressive run here, boss, if he wants to give Army a shot at that title there. It'll have to be really fast. It looks like he ran into a little bit of trouble there, but he will finish. And across the stripe comes Lally in a 124.85. And that is good enough for 58. So William Lavis from Navy holds off Army all by himself. We'll have to see how the end of this race pans out. Meanwhile, Ryan Hutchinson from the University of Minnesota Duluth on course. Into the lower third comes Hutchinson. He's followed by the Nittany Lion from Penn State, Jeremy Katz. And then Sebastian Dumont from University of Maine, Farmington. Meanwhile, across the stripe comes Ryan Hutchinson in a time of 126.33. Good enough for 61st place. Now through the center section into the lower third, it's Penn State University's Jeremy Katz. Sebastian Dumont from Humane Farmington on course. And now dropping in from the top of the start shack, the University of Idaho's Samuel Hahn. He'll be followed by a Stanford's Tomas Grosjean. But here at the bottom with six gates to go, it's Penn State University's Jeremy Katz. Now Katz across the stripe into the finish corral with a time of 128.83. Good enough for 62nd position. Now we see Sebastian Dumont from Humane Farmington. Qualified 72nd after the first run. And University of Idaho's Samuel Hahn on course. We'll also see Tomas Grosjeans just dropped in from the top. And he'll be followed by Northern Michigan University's Graham Jansen. Two gates to go for Dumont. And across the stripe, it's Sa Sebastian Dumont from University of Maine Farmington in a time of 130.47. And a combined time of 250.08. Good enough for 64th position. Sam Hahn now from University of Idaho coming down. Of course, Sam Hahn, the junior out of Idaho, 21 years old, also an avid telemark skier, and you can tell that that really affects uh, this uh, his performance in the slalom. He has got a lot of leg strength, and that's something you definitely need in telemark skiing. And you can see, although he looked tired at the end of that course, he had a lot of fight left in him. That's Sam Hahn from the University of Idaho, finishing in... 64th position, now at Stanford's Tomas Grosjean. Grosjean having some difficulty coming out of the transition, but he looks like he's back on course here. And Graham Jansen from Northern Michigan University is on course, qualified 75th after the first run. And now from Columbia University, it's Peter Krojic. Krojic. In from the start shack, he'll be followed by Adam Drobish from Penn State. Thomas, Thomas Grosjean took one of those turns very wide, boss. I'm not sure what happened right there. Maybe thought he had missed a gate, but then decided to keep going. I don't know. We'll wait and see uh, from those gatekeepers exactly what happened. Meanwhile, Stanford's Tomas Grosjean crosses the stripe in a time of 138.44. It's good enough for 66th position. And now moving well is Graham Jansen from Northern Michigan University. Now into the tuck, the final gate comes Jansen. Graham Jansen across the stripe in 
Columbia University's Peter Krawczyk on course. He's followed by Adam Drobish from Penn State University and the University of Idaho's James, check that, Casey Hayward is now dropped in from the start shock for run number two. A big day for the men here on the Monday morning trail at Sunday River. Day two of Alpine racing. The women were yesterday. Matea Ferk winning a national championship yesterday. And today, it's Jacka Jazbeck's turn. Meanwhile, Peter Krawczyk from Columbia University crossing the stripe in 135-25. Now into the lower third with 12 gates to go. It's Adam Drobish. Casey Hayward from Idaho is next. And then we'll see the United States Military Academy's James D'Amelia. Five gates to go now for Drobish. The Nittany Lion into the tuck. Across the stripe comes Drobish. And a time of 132.85. Casey Hayward skiing for the University of Idaho. Of course, Sun Valley, Idaho, the home of the 2011 USCSA National Championships. As these national championships change coasts each and every year. We go west in the odd years and east in the even years. Certainly found a wonderful home here at the Sunday River Resort. And we may very well be back to the Sun Valley Resort. Out in beautiful Ketchum, Idaho next winter for another edition of National Championship Racing here at the USCSA. Casey Hayward across the stripe in 133.59. And now James D'Amelia from Army. Letting it all hang out in the transition. Into the lower third with 13 gates to go. Here comes D'Amelia. He'll be followed by Cornell University's James Damari. And now in the start shack, it's Columbia's Ben Barjusi. That's when they put five consonants together without a vowel. <laughs> Confusing boss hog. We'll just call him Ben B from Columbia. James D'Amelia now from Army across the stripe in 131.43. And Ben B from Columbia University is on course. I'll bet it's Barzuski. Is that what the CZ sound is? Barzuski? Yeah, something like that. Yeah? Oh, we can ask him. We will, as soon as he gets <laughs> down here. Oh, we got the thumbs up. It's a confirmation right there. Folks, make sure you join us tomorrow here on the USCSA Radio Network as we bring you live coverage of the Women's Alpine Slalom Championships here on the Monday Morning Trail. Coverage begins at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. We should see four runners at about 9.54 a.m. And our first racers coming down for run number one of two-run coverage at 10 a.m. And back with you at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon for the second run of the Ladies Slalom of the Ladies Slalom event. That's right. And we hope you'll tune in to www.uscsa.com for all of the coverage here from Barker Mountain. And as exciting as these GS races have been, slalom is so much different, so technical. It requires every amount of concentration by these racers, and it should be very exciting to watch, boss. We certainly have had our share of excitement the last two days here from Barker Mountain. Matea Furk giving, her, giving us the run of a lifetime yesterday to win the ladies GS. And now, Jacob Jasbeck coming out of nowhere and winning a national title here today. Back to live action. It's Ben B from Columbia University across the stripe in 144.49. And we hope that Ben B will come into the broadcast booth after his run and tell us how to pronounce his last name. And we'll do it right. Meanwhile, Rick Abinidushi from Babson College. It's Beniducci across the stripe in 125.70. So a good, clean national championship GS for Ricky Beniducci. Hobart College's Kloon Walsh now on course. He's followed by Hari Ganti from Stanford. Michael Cadman from the University of British Columbia waits the top in the shack for run number two. Eight gates to go for Clune Walsh from Hobart College. 
Here comes Clune Walsh with four gates to go. Walsh now into the tuck. Pushing for the stripe and punching it out. It's Clune Walsh from Hobart College with a time of 132.76. Stanford's Hari Ganti now on course. He'll be followed by Michael Cadman from British Columbia. Stanford's Harry Ganti, also a member of the Stanford Marching Band. I've got a friend at Stanford also in the band. He says it's an extremely intense group, a lot of traveling. Of course, that intense Stanford-Cal rivalry. There's some Cal skiers here as well. I'm wondering how that interaction is working out. And across the stripe comes Harry Ganti from Stanford University, a good, clean national championship for Ganty with a time of 143.49. And that looks to be all of our men's runners. That's the end of the second run for the men's division. And I'll tell you one thing, Alex, there is no doubt that the Castleton coach, Dale Solatruck, set a mean beast here on the Monday morning trail in run number two of this men's GS final. I'm sure some of those racers are gonna have some rough words for him if they see him around here. At the, uh, at the bottom of this course. That was a doozy of a course there with that killer left-footed turn just before that final pitch. That was a killer, boss. We'll get the final 15 standings for you in just a moment. In the meantime, let us remind you, broadcast coverage begins at 9.45 in the morning tomorrow as we bring you run number one for the ladies' slalom here from the Monday morning trail. The beautiful Barker Mountain in Sunday River, Maine. We hope you'll tune in to the USCSA Radio Network. Now let's give you the final results for this men's 2012 USCSA Giant Slalom Final. Finishing in 15th place from the University of British Columbia, it's Ben Middleton. In 14th from Clarkson, Christian Perryman. In the 13th position from University of Colorado, Brian Kazar. St. Olaf's Nick Stang in the 12th slot. In the 11th position, it's Rocky Mountain College's Harold Carlson. Now rounding out your top 10 from the University of Nevada, Reno in 10th place, Aldo Balabio. In 9th, from British Columbia, Michael Bisner. Nathan Ord from Whitman College takes the 8th slot. In 7th, Anton Larson from Rocky Mountain College. In the sixth position from Sierra Nevada College, the number one qualifier from run number one in the defending national champion, but he had a tough time coming down the second run. It's Marcus Plyer. And now your top five from Sierra Nevada, Rico Erickson in fifth. His teammate, Luca Rico in fourth. In third place from St. Olaf, it's Hawkins Schoenhater. The runner up from Sierra Nevada is Clement Toma Michelle. And your 2012 USCSA National Champion in the men's giant slalom from Sierra Nevada College. Let's hear it for Jacka Jazbeck. Impressive stuff from the entire Alpine team at Sierra Nevada College. And we'll be back with the men again on Saturday for their slalom competition here at Sunday River. Exciting stuff here today, wouldn't you say, Alex Beating? Absolutely, boss. I haven't seen a race that exciting in quite some time, and I've skied in a lot of races. But let's also give our hats off to, uh, let's give our hats off to all of the crew here. And it looks like, wait a second, it looks like we've got Mr. B in. No, we've got Mr. B into the broadcast center. We didn't know how to pronounce his name, but before we sign off, we want to, you've got five consonants in a row in your name. Tell us how you pronounce the name. It's Polish and it's Barczewski. Barczewski. That's right. I'll never forget it as it's, long as I live. It's really easy when I tell you, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, but when you see B-C-Z-L-K-X all together, you have no idea that means Barczewski, right? Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Great run today. <laughs> Always fun here in the broadcast booth at uh, Sunday River. We're glad Mr. B came and uh, gave us the proper pronunciation. We'll make sure we get it right on uh, Saturday's coverage of the men's slalom. The 2012 USCSA National Championships are brought to you in part by Patagonia. Their mission, to build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, and to use business to inspire and impl implement solutions to the environmental crisis. Learn more at Patagonia.com. 
proud supporters of the USCSA. And by Reliable Racing, whether it's Alpine and Nordic ski racing apparel and equipment, hill and event supplies, sports timing equipment, or hard to find race gear, Reliable Racing is your one-stop shop. Check them out on the web at ReliableRacing.com. Today's coverage also brought to you by Yeti Apparel. When you're facing truly abominable weather, the Yeti has you covered. Visit them at YetiApparel.com. Yeti, proud supporters of Boss Hogs Haircut. And by Hurricane Racing. When it's custom team Alpine, Nordic, and cycling race apparel you seek, Hurricane Racing delivers. Demand the very best in custom printed ski suits, jackets, pants, and race apparel. Demand Hurricane Racing at HurricaneRacing.com, official sponsors of the 2012 USCSA National Championships. Join us tomorrow morning at 945 here on the USCSA Radio Network as we bring you live coverage of the Women's Slalom Championship on the Monday morning trail at Parker Mountain in the beautiful western mountains of Maine and Sunday River Resort. On behalf of all of us here at Sunday River and on behalf of Alex Beatty, I'm Boss Hogg saying so long, everybody.